few months ago, I made a video building a Voron 0.1 3D printer using a kit from the folks at Seabor. I called it the cheapest and most complete kit for the Voron 0.1 on the market, but it wasn't the nicest. Not too long after that, the Voron design team released the updated V0, the 0.2. So of course, Seabor came out with a 0.2 kit. And this is one of the cheapest 0.2 kits on the market at 469 free shipping on AliExpress right now. In this video, we're gonna build this thing and see whether or not they made the updates I wanted to see over their 0.1 kit and whether or not this one is worth it. Let's check it out. Let's get a quick disclosure out of the way. This kit in front of you was provided to me by the folks at Seabor. Now they will have no input on this video. They are not going to see it before you folks see it. Everything I'm going to present to you are my own opinions from building this kit. They were really receptive to hearing what I was critiquing about the 0.1 and claimed they were making updates and improvements. I never got one of the updated kits, so I cannot confirm that ever happened, but I have the 0.2. So let's get this thing out of the box. Popping this thing open, I'm immediately greeted with exactly what I expected to see. The quality packaging that they used in the 0.1 kit carries on here with this nice foam, separated and organized really nicely, and it's looking good. Until we pull the printed parts out and take a closer look, I can already see a problem. At first glance, aesthetically, the printed parts here look pretty darn good to me, especially the red ones. It's a nice striking red, and I quite like it. But then I pulled out some of the black pieces and took a closer look. When printing parts for a Voron, you should be using ABS or ASA filament due to the chamber temperatures they're going to be seeing later, which can be challenging materials for folks who are not set up and prepared for them. These parts like to be printed hot and stay hot. They don't like to be rapidly cooled off. So you really have to balance things like your part cooling, the draft in the space are being printed in, so enclosed printers are a good idea. Higher chamber temperatures inside of an enclosed printer are a good idea. If these things are not controlled, the parts have a tendency to want to curl as they rapidly cool off. That can cause them, as with this part, to curl right up off of the bed and surfaces that should be flat are no longer flat, or it can cause an arguably worse issue, such as this component, where actual layers will separate because the part's staying stuck to the bed, but the layers are curling away from each other with that rapid cooling. I can't speak to the conditions that Seabor is printing these parts in, but the QA on them was not good enough in my opinion. I think I can assemble a fully functional machine with the parts I do have here. So I'm gonna put this V0.2 together and then reprint the parts that are problems on the machine. This is not me giving Seabor a pass. This is the selling point of this kit. They need to address this issue, but we can still move forward here. With that out of the way, let's do a quick rundown of the parts that are included with this kit and start throwing it together. We've got four fans included in this kit, two blow fans for this mini stealth burner part cooling and two 30 millimeter axial fans to cool the hot end and you can use the other one for board cooling on the main board. It seems like they're going a little more premium with the 0.2 kit versus the 0.1. They included this encoder wheel screen for the front of the machine and an ADXL accelerometer for input shaper tuning, though I'm going to have to solder on the pins for it. The main board that's gonna control and run this machine is the same as the last one. This is the Mellow Fly Gemini V3 board. It's a solid option, which has a MCU on the one end, so the motor control unit, and on the same PCB, it has a Raspberry Pi clone built into it to control the whole thing from one board. Continuing the slightly more premium aspect of this 0.2 kit, we've got a proper PEI coated spring steel sheet in this build and a much better bed than the last kit. This is a six millimeter piece of plate aluminum. This is not cast aluminum as is the Voron spec, but it's definitely an upgrade over the last kit, which had a much wimpier bed. And definitely a big deal because I made a big stink about it in the last video. This has a properly specced silicone 60 watt, 24 volt bed heater included in the kit. The last one had a way oversized PCB bed heater. This is what I wanna see from them and is a excellent step in the right direction. The last part I wanna talk about comes in this silly little carry case, and that is the hot end for this machine. They call this a V6 style hot end, and it has a similar design of heatsink, but that's where the similarities end. There is no groove mount on the top of it. It actually has a four bolt pattern, similar to a Fetus Dragon, that actually bolts into place. On the bottom end of this thing, we've got an all metal heat break and then a all encompassing ceramic heater element. That heater block has a silicone sock, a inbuilt thermistor and a metal strain relief built in. 
The ceramic heater doesn't look like any that I've seen previously. It's different than the Triangle Lab CHC, the Drop Effect XG, or the Fadest Rapido, but a similar concept to those. Included is an unknown material abrasion resistant nozzle in the end of this thing, and two brass nozzles. All are 0.4 millimeter diameter. I expect this thing to heat up rapidly due to that ceramic heater element, which is something I like about these designs, but I don't know if it's going to lead to increased flow rate over a standard heater block design, and it could be a limiting factor in this build, so we're going to have to test that. With the parts overview out of the way, I'm going to dive into building this machine. I'm only going to stop and call out if I run into issues, otherwise I'm just going to build this thing and discuss what I'm finding once we get it printing and running. So as you can see, I clearly have a functional Voron 0.2 here in front of me on the bench. It's working, it's printing, so I must not have had any problems with the build, right? How I wish that was true. Before we get into the issues I had, let's go positive. Let's talk about the things that I like about this machine and the experience with it. The red ABS printed parts that came with this kit are perfectly fine and went together really well. That mini stealth burner assembled without issue just went together easily and really straightforward. The linear rails, the bearings, the belts that came in this kit, they all work exactly as I would expect. The motion system works smoothly. All the acrylic panels and the printed parts were able to be used to assemble this machine. They just went together, fit as they were supposed to, and did not require modification in any way. The wiring diagram included with this machine was overall really great for showing where each connection needed to be made on the board and what they were supposed to go to. Really helpful in breaking down this specific application. Continuing with that board, Clipper came pre-installed and configured on this machine, ready to run out of the box, except for the Wi-Fi credentials for my studio network, of course. 30 millimeter fans can often be pretty loud, but the ones included in this kit, I think are a pretty reasonable sound level. A good chunk of the wiring for this machine was already pre-terminated and ready to go. From the inlet, from the wall plug, going to the power supply, from the power supply to the main board, the Z-limit switch, those are already ready to be hooked up, screwed in, plugged in, and go. But not all the wiring was ready to roll out of the box. Before we talk about the issues with this machine, let's talk about the hot end, because it's kind of a neutral thing. It's not really great, it's not really that bad either. First and foremost, I do think this is an excellent choice of hot end for a kit like this. It's a budget option that has the same bolt pattern as a Fadus Dragon. The printed parts in use in this kit are for a Fadus Dragon, meaning you have a direct upgrade path to a higher quality hot end without having to throw out a mid-range hot end that you're not gonna end up using. I said earlier that the ceramic heater on this should heat up rapidly, and I was correct. It rocket ships up to temperature and a little past where you're aiming for until you get it PID tuned in. It definitely needs that. Speaking of quick, when you're trying to rapidly print things, you need quite a bit of flow rate to keep up with the fast printer movement. So I tested the flow on this hot end using the brass nozzle, not the wear resistant one, because that should transfer temperature better to the filament. I printed using Polymaker ASA at 235 degrees Celsius, and I printed a couple of racetrack tests for this. Using the straight through nozzle that came with this kit, I got 10 millimeters cubed per second on the flow rate. Thoroughly meh. To be fair, that's exactly what I expected. There's nothing about this hot end that screams high flow. The V0.1 kit that I got from Seabor came with a knockoff CHT brass nozzle that this doesn't have, curiously, and I really think it could have helped here. To test that, I ordered some Amazon CHT knockoffs that have that copper slug in the middle of them, like CNC Kitchen tested, and I threw one of those in this thing and ran a test again. Sure enough, I got about 12 and a half millimeters cubed per second with that. So a 25% increase is nothing to sneeze at. For like $12, I think I got five of them. So I would absolutely recommend picking those up if you get this kit. Overall, I think this hot end was a good choice for this kit. It's a budget option to get going and you have a direct upgrade path for it. I just wish they would have included one of those high flow nozzles again. 
Now, unfortunately, it's time to talk about the problems I had with this kit and this build. Before we deep dive, I wanna make one thing clear. My opinion is that the target market for the Seabor kits is somebody who hasn't previously built a DIY style 3D printer like a Voron. They're looking at it and saying, oh, it's got ABS parts already in there. I don't have any experience printing that stuff. I don't have a machine capable of it. It's already got Clipper installed on the board. It's got a budget price point. This is gonna be a great way for me to build my first Voron. So when I come across issues in a kit like this, that's what I'm thinking about. So if I seem a little nitpicky at times, please consider it from that perspective. Let's start off the bad where we left off with the good, the wiring. Yes, there are various connectors pre-terminated and ready to go on this thing, but there are just as many that are not terminated or need to be modified to actually be functional. Such as the A and B motors for the Core XY system have terminals on the end of them, but no connectors. So you have to pin those connectors yourself to the board using the diagram provided. But then some of the stuff that's already terminated needs to be changed, like the Z-axis motor wire. When I plugged it into the main board, I noticed the middle two wires were opposite of the A and B motors. I thought, Maybe this is the way it's supposed to be. Let's try and... Yeah, I had to de-pin those middle two wires, flip-flop them, put them back in, and then I had a functional Z-axis. Seabor is already aware of this issue and has updated the wiring diagram on the GitHub page, but you're still gonna have to de-pin and rewire this connector, at least for the current inventory that they have. The part cooling fans on the tool head, each one has its own two pin connector on the end of it, but there's only one port on the board for them to plug into. You have to strip them back, solder them together, or crimp new terminals onto the ends of the wires so they go into a single plug. This is the way the wiring diagram shows them being, but you have to do it yourself. The last thing is the accelerometer for input shaper tuning. I just dropped the pins that you have to solder into this yourself, as I mentioned earlier. It also comes with the pigtail to plug into the main board, but that is all that it comes with. There's no length of wire to go from the board to the accelerometer. There's no other end of the pigtail. You're gonna have to get your own wire, make your own terminals, and build this harness yourself. Let's talk about the hardware used to build this machine. When I built the 0.1 from Seabor, the hardware kit it came with was short on one size of N3 hardware. I don't remember exactly which size. This 0.2 kit was also short on M3 by 10. This kit only came with 25 in it, but the build of materials for the Voron team calls for 50 to be in there. You don't actually need 50. That's giving you wiggle room, some leftover, which I have leftover of every other size, but I had to pull about a dozen of them out of my personal inventory to finish this build. There were a couple of things missing here. And no, I don't mean firmware or hardware. I mean stuff that I expected to be in the box that just wasn't there, like instructions for this build. The wiring diagram is the only paper in the box, and it has a URL in the corner telling you to go to the Voron website to get the manual for this. That'll get you most of the way there, but there are specifics about this kit that aren't gonna be in there, such as the drag chain for the bed on this thing covers one of the mounting screws for the main board on the back panel. The Voron team manual has you put the drag chain in 40 pages before the back panel, so by the time I went to install that, I couldn't put the screw in. A supplemental manual would tell me that. When I reviewed the V0.1, they had their own manual for that project that had additional pages and supplements in it for things like that you were gonna have to know. Or a bigger one, in my opinion, the Wi-Fi on this thing. As I said, you have to connect it. There was a whole section in the V0.1 manual about doing that. There's none of that provided with this kit. So I had to look it up online, knowing how to find that information so I could connect the Wi-Fi. Just a QR code on a postcard getting to that Voron manual at the very least would go a long way to helping here or to the Wi-Fi instructions. I remember recommending that in my 0.1 review, but they clearly didn't take that advice. The last thing we need to discuss is probably the biggest thing that I already touched on a little bit, the printed parts in play here. The red parts, are perfectly fine. They have good look to them. They are strong. They seem to be dimensionally accurate. I had no problems with them. The black ones that I showed you issues with before only got worse as I assembled this thing. I have built plenty of printers that use 3D printed parts. I wasn't over tightening things, but almost every black part, when I put a screw into it and started to tighten it down, I would hear creaking and cracking internally in the print. There are layer adhesion issues in these black parts. It seems to me that somebody either printed them too cool or had too much part cooling on them, trying to get them to look better, but that cost them layer adhesion strength in the prints. Multiple parts that were not cracked when I started are cracked now. Like all four corners of the feet on this thing cracked while putting the screws into them. One of the odd 
saddler brackets at the front of this thing. The upper door hinge. Now don't get me wrong, I have a complete 3D printer and everything I've printed on it so far has been ASA. It is fully capable of producing replacement parts for itself, which is what I set out to do. But a lot of them are going to be really annoying to replace, like the bed pieces, the idler at the front. You're going to have to largely disassemble this thing to replace those parts. Realistically, I'm almost certainly not going to end up doing that. I'm definitely not doing it in this video. With the good and the bad out of the way, it's time to draw a conclusion. There's a lot of value in this kit. It is a complete, mostly, 0.2 kit for less than 500 bucks. With not a whole heck of a lot of tuning, I'm getting some good quality prints off of it that I would be happy with. I see a good fit for this being somebody like myself. Maybe you want another Voron, you've already built one, but you don't want to spend as much as you did on the last one. So you could pick up a budget kit like this. If you do run into print quality issues, you can reprint your own parts on your other machine and get back up and running in an afternoon. Maybe you have some spare parts to upgrade this a little bit, like a better hot end or something. For a decent price, you could have another Voron to add to your stable. I unfortunately don't think it's the best kit for those folks that it's going to appeal to the most those first time Voron builders I mentioned earlier. Spending a little more money on something like an LDO kit and using the Print It Forward program from the Voron team, which is going to get you printed parts for a reasonable price to build your machine, is just going to be a superior way to go and have less hassle in my opinion. I'm sorry if my criticism comes off a little harsh, but this is my second go around with Seabor where there wasn't enough hardware to actually assemble the kit, where there wasn't a quick easy way to get to the instructions included in the box. This kit's also a higher price point than the 0.1 kit that I previously reviewed, but that kit came with a soldering iron and a crimper to help with wiring and inserting heat press inserts. This more expensive kit didn't. I hate to say this, but I really question whether anybody actually assembled this kit before they put it on the market. They would have probably quickly realized there weren't enough screws or the Z-axis motor was wired incorrectly and it won't actually move. I acknowledge that this is a budget kit and some of my expectations are probably a little high for that price point, but I see these points where it looks like they were trying to achieve a quality level, but they only went halfway to actually doing it. Like including an accelerometer in this kit, but no way to actually connect it to the machine. Wiring that's halfway well terminated, but then there's not even connectors on the motors. I do not envy trying to hit a price point with a product like this. I understand that it is not an easy thing to do, but at a certain point when you start to cut corners to meet that price, there's probably better ways you could have done it, like just not including a six, $7 accelerometer in the kit at all. I should note that I am not the only one who got one of these kits to review. I know Greg's Maker Corner got one, ModBot got one. So I'm gonna throw some links in the description to other videos about this kit so you can get a well-rounded view of it. Maybe they had entirely different perspectives than I do. I'm gonna throw links in the description to supplemental information that I think will help you to put this kit together if you do pick one up. And if you are interested after my review, there's an affiliate link in the description as well. So you could pick one of these up and help support future content on this channel. All right, folks, that's where we're gonna wrap it up for this one. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, maybe you'll find this workshop vlog where I worked on my Voron 2.4 interesting, or this video, which YouTube thinks is the best match for you. And of course, get subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt. Thanks for coming around, folks.